This is the Youth Bible with Nikki and Pippa Gumbel, day 64. How do we stay healthy? And it's not just being physically healthy, but how do we stay spiritually healthy? Because God cares about our hearts. He cares about the health of our inner being. So how do we keep our spiritual hearts healthy? Well, let's look deeper into how to stay healthy in today's passages. Avoid smoking and using tobacco products. Be physically active every day. Eat a healthy diet. Maintain a healthy weight. Manage your blood pressure. Control your total cholesterol. Keep your blood sugar healthy. According to the American Heart Association, these are the seven things that you should do to keep your physical heart healthy. The human heart weighs less than a pound, 450 grams. It beats 100,000 times a day and over 2.5 billion times in the average lifetime. Your system of blood vessels, arteries, veins and capillaries is over 60,000 miles long, enough to go round the world more than twice. This is not just an amazing spectacle. It is the heart of human life. Without your heart, your body would quickly cease to work. Heart disease is the number one cause of death in the Western world. Jesus spoke a great deal about the heart. The heart is a metaphor for the inner life. The word Jesus used means the seat of the physical, spiritual, and mental life. The heart is the center and the source of the whole inner being, thinking, feeling, and willing. God is concerned primarily about your heart. He wants you to have a healthy heart. He said to Samuel, The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Even more important than a healthy physical heart is the condition of your spiritual heart. In the passages for today, we see five key ways to keep your spiritual heart healthy. From Proverbs 6 My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them always on your heart. Fasten them round your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. For this command is a lamp, this teaching is a light, and correction and instruction are the way to life. Keeping you from your neighbor's wife, do not lust in your heart after her beauty. Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? First, guard your heart. Jesus taught that adultery starts in the heart. He said, I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. His teaching goes back to the book of Proverbs, where the writer emphasizes the importance of the heart. Do not lust in your heart. He warns of the terrible dangers of adultery. We're dealing with something so powerful it's like a fire. In its right place, just like a fire in the fireplace, sex within marriage is a source of great blessing. However, if you allow your sexual desires to go in the wrong direction, then it's like fire in your lap. Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? Can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? So is he who sleeps with another man's wife. Adultery does not usually just appear from nowhere. The unfaithfulness starts with the heart. This is where we have to exercise self-discipline. Take these words of wisdom and bind them upon your heart. Lord, help me to take your words and bind them upon my heart. When I walk, may they guide me. When I sleep, may they watch over me. When I awake, may they speak to me. May they be like a lamp and a light, keeping me on the way to life. Guard my heart, Lord. New Testament from Mark 12 One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than than these. The large crowd listened to him with delight. As he taught, Jesus said, Watch out for the teachers of the law. 
They like to walk around in flowing robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honour at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few pence. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Second, love Jesus with your whole heart. There is something delightful about the teaching of Jesus. The large crowd listened to him with delight. If I were asked to summarize this teaching in one word, I would use the word love. When Jesus is asked by a lawyer, which of all the commandments is the most important, he replies, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. At the center of the message of Jesus is a love relationship with the Lord your God, which starts with your heart and overflows into a love for other people. Who is the Lord? The question underlying all this quizzing of Jesus is, who does this man think he is? In the temple courts, Jesus turns the tables on them by challenging their assumptions about the coming Messiah, the Christ. He asks them a question, quoting Psalm 110. He challenges the idea that the Christ will simply be a king from David's line. He will not only be a son of David, he will be David's Lord. We now know that Jesus is the Lord. The command to love the Lord with all your heart is a command to love Jesus with all your heart. Make this the number one priority of your life. Jesus is concerned not with legalistic literalism, but with the spirit of the law. He's concerned not with the outward appearances, but with the heart. Third, focus on your heart. Speaking for myself, I find that hypocrisy is always a danger in my own life. It's a temptation to be concerned about position, platforms, titles and honours. And we have to be careful about praying prayers to impress rather than from the heart. Jesus criticises the leaders of his day because their hearts are not right. They're far more concerned about outward appearances than about their own hearts. He says they love to walk around in academic gowns, preening in the radiance of public flattery, basking in prominent positions, sitting at the head table at every church function. And all the time, they are exploiting the weak and helpless. The longer their prayers, the worse they get. All the things mentioned indicate their love of being shown deference and of receiving honour from other people. But God is not concerned about status and show. He's concerned about our hearts. Fourth, give from your heart. Jesus is not concerned about the size of your wallet. He's concerned about the size of your heart. Jesus challenged the conventional assumption that large gifts are worth more to God than small ones. He encourages us that it's not only the rich who can please God through their giving. The poor can do so as well. He challenges the rich that it's not enough simply to give sums that greatly surpass that of the poor. Jesus was looking for generous and sacrificial hearts. What we give and the way in which we give reflects our hearts. Jesus does not actually criticize the rich people who throw in large amounts of money. But he does say that the poor widow who gives two very small copper coins worth only a few pence has put in more than all the others. Jesus sees her heart and the fact that this poor widow gave more to the offering than all the others put together. All the others gave what they'll never miss. She gave extravagantly what she couldn't afford. She gave her all. Others look at the outward appearance. Jesus looks at the heart. It's not the amount, but the attitude of the heart that matters to God. Lord, help me to love you with all my heart and with all my soul and with all my mind and with all my strength. Forgive me for the times when I've been concerned about status or show and help me to focus not on outward appearance, but on the heart. Lord, help me to be generous and sacrificial in my giving. Give me a generous heart. Old Testament from Leviticus 13 
These are the regulations concerning defiling moulds in woollen or linen clothing, woven or knitted material, or any leather article, for pronouncing them clean or unclean. Fifth, keep your heart holy. The Old Testament laws covered every aspect of life, including cleanliness, health and hygiene. As a result, we read a great deal in the Old Testament about the kinds of regulations set out in this chapter, in addition to all the burnt offerings and the sacrifices. These rules and regulations were all concerned with holiness, though, and their motivation was supposed to stem from a desire to please and emulate God. In other words, the outward rituals were supposed to reflect the inner attitudes of the heart. At the time of Jesus, many of the teachers were putting the emphasis in the wrong place. They thought that holiness could be attained simply by obeying a whole lot of rules that concerned outward behavior and actions, rather than heartfelt obedience towards God. Jesus pointed out there is something far more important than all of this, as we see in today's New Testament passage, to love God with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. Holiness is not a matter of outward appearance. It's a matter of the heart. Lord, help me to guard my heart from spiritual heart disease. May we be a community of love, loving you and loving one another. Please fill my heart today with your Holy Spirit and keep my heart holy and healthy. Pepper adds, The challenge from Jesus in Mark 12, verse 31 is, that we should love our neighbor as ourself. Well, I'm thinking, how do I look after myself? I think pretty well. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you died on a cross for me to make me clean. I'm sorry for the things that I have done. And I ask today that you would cleanse my heart. Make me clean again so I can overflow into the people I meet today. Help me to show your love to everyone I see. In Jesus' name, amen.